I'm going to attempt to do a really high level <laughs> review of renal tubular acidosis, <laughs> which I'm setting myself a little bit up for failure because this is extremely complicated. And, and Joe, I, I will ask you to sub in here in a moment to, to fill in any gaps. But essentially the way I think about renal tubular acidosis is it's a, a problem in different segments of the nephron in doing their job, right? So it, in, in a super intuitive fashion, it's types one, two, and four. Of course, they had to skip three. And of course, one has to be distal, right? And two has to be proximal. So that's confusing as well. Um, and really the way I think about this is, and, and I won't go into too much detail, but essentially what is the role of the distal nephron? What is the role of the proximal nephron, right? If you think about what cell types are in those regions and um, what happens when those particular cells like the alpha intercalated cells or you know, the, the different cells in, in the nephron, what happens when they go wrong? And it's a combination of an anion gap, anion gap uh, a normal anion gap and non-anion anion gap metabolic acidosis in combination with that intrinsic injury or problem with um, the different segments of the nephron. Is there any other uh, sort of simple way that you describe RTAs to folks? I'll do my best. So <laughs> RTA, really annoying set of diagnoses. Here's what I would say for either step one or step two. We have to understand what RTA means first. And RTA means that the renal tubules are broken. And so you have metabolic acidosis. It's extremely tempting to look at RTA and say, oh, the renal tubules are acidic. That is not true. That is not the case because there's some RTA versions that have elevated urine pH, which means basic urine, which does not work if you're considering RTA to be a renal tubular acidosis, as it sounds like. To reiterate, RTA means renal tubules are broken, so you have serum metabolic acidosis as a result. Specifically, this is one of the forms or multiple several subtypes of the forms of non-anion gap metabolic acidosis. I will try to make this as simple as possible. You do not likely need to memorize type one, two, or four, what they mean, how they work. I know there's a beautiful or terrifying, whatever you want to call it, table in first aid that lists the three types. I have never seen a question that forces students to choose between one, two, and four. The worst case scenario, the absolute scariest thing I've seen for RTA is a patient presenting with metabolic acidosis, a low bicarbonate, with no anion gap, which you can calculate by looking at the sodium chloride and bicarb. And the only answer choice that wasn't an anion gap acidosis was RTA. And that's the correct answer. That's the worst case scenario I've ever seen. So if we're really like how to prepare for RTA on the exam and really getting into like the hyper Cliff's notes territory, the answer is it's a non anion gap acidosis because the renal tubules are busted and we can't handle normal acid balance the way the kidneys are supposed to. So we get a non anion gap acidosis. If you know that much, you can probably answer 90% of the questions they'd ever ask about RTA on the exam. And you'll probably only get one question on the exam with RTA in it anyway. So you're probably set. So in terms of efficiency, that's what I would learn if I were going to be worried about an RTA question on the exam. And then I would move on to memorizing like cytochrome P450 drugs or something, something that's like way higher yield than that.